Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Sandy Camillo. She has a resume that's unbelievable. She's first of all director at large for AAUW, and she's one of the candidates for the upcoming election, getting to vote for 10 out of 13 possible candidates. She's also National Public Policy Committee liaison. She's on the task force that managed the disposition of valuable AAUW assets. On the branch level, she has been involved with public policy, with issues in diversity, and with fundraising. And now professionally, she's in, she has been a, re a receivership specialist, a corporate paralegal, a realtor, and Hoping you'll all be on your best behavior. She's also been a school principal. <laughs> I have to start by apologizing for my weak voice because my voice is usually raspy, but I just got over a terrible cough, so excuse me for that. I'm so happy to be here today back in Indiana. Many, many years ago, I won't say how many, I lived in Fort Wayne as a young girl in my 20s. I have great memories. I also had a dream when I was a young girl. I always wanted to be a newspaper reporter like Lois Lane. But my brother convinced me, as a woman, the only job that I would be doing in that office was washing the floors. So I gave up that dream. As you can see from my careers, I tried a lot of different things. AUW works very, very hard to make sure that our daughters and our granddaughters will never have to give up any of their dreams. And I've got a 38-page presentation here filled with things that AUW is doing and will be doing and we will not be talking about. I would probably put you to sleep anyway because some of it you already know. So what I've chosen to do is highlight some features and if you have any questions about other things, I have a whole bunch of cards on that back table. When I say to you, seriously, write to me on my email, I answer you because I believe that this is a membership organization. You are the members, you are, made, you are the people that make it, so I need to be there for you. Let's take a look at the first slide. Okay, the first slide speaks about our new logo. Now, I've been hearing from more people all over the country about the logo. Some people hate it, some people love it. Anything artistic gets that reaction. The reason we did this, however, is because the logo that we used that was done in 1990 did not translate well in a digital world. It just didn't work well. In addition to that, the W that we used to have had very thin lines. Those thin lines, when we tried to put it on our website, did not look good. So they decided they had to change this logo. We had a committee set up. People worked on it. They put it before the board. We voted. And we have our new logo. In addition to that, we changed our slogan. And the reason we changed our slogan was we felt we wanted to capture the power that we know is in each and every one of you. So now our slogan is Empowering Women Since 1881. The next slide shows some pictures through the years of the different logos. It's kind of interesting to take a look at that. By the way, you all have packets in front of you that I made up and I lugged it with me so that you could look over this at your leisure. Yeah. AUW Indiana would look something like this slide. Now you don't have to use these colors by the way because we don't have the color anymore. You can choose to use the teal or you can choose to get creative. So it's not something if you don't like green you have to keep the green. This is our new website. Now, we changed the website because we wanted to make it more user-friendly. Again, I hear grumbles all the time about user-friendly. I, I, I can't even get onto any of the sites, okay? Well, technology is sometimes that way. I don't want you to hesitate, though, while this, these little glitches are being worked out, to get your problems resolved with the website. So please contact Connect. And I will even throw out there, if you can't get help from Connect, then contact me through my email. Stand here. Our next website has to do with, no it doesn't, okay, I have this a little backwards, so I'm going to go what you have up here. 
Member-only resources we're not covering. All it has to do with the fact there are still some sites on the website that you have to be, give your member number in order to use, but that's not that important a thing. What is important, on the new website is a video that shows you how to vote. We got very tech savvy this time around. So it walks you through exactly how you vote this June. Not only will you vote for the directors and the new president of AUW and the vice president, you will also vote for some revisions to the public policy platform, and you will vote for one resolution that changes the bylaws. Now, a lot of people are not comfortable with online voting. If you feel that you want to vote via a paper ballot, you have until May 2nd to contact Connect. They will send you a paper ballot out. You must have that postmark back by May 17th if you want to do it via paper. You know, we all speak about how difficult it is to attract members. AUW, although we now are up to over 160,000 members and supporters, are always looking for ways to attract them. So for our national people, for people who want to join just as national members, on every page now of the website, we have a, a logo saying join. All you have to do is click it, and it's a fast and easy way to become a national member. Don't make the mistake that I made and click that if you're a branch member. Because if you want to renew, you still have to go through the Member Services Database. This is a great tool. Now, I know that South Bend, the South Bend branch, has used this to create a website. You can get a website created for your branch totally free. The only thing, if you want it free, you'll have to update it yourself. If you want AUW to help you for $120 a year, they'll put the latest updates on your website. So this is a great feature, and I encourage you all to use the site resources. As of March 2013, more than 325 branches across the country are using this to get their websites up. Another way that we are increasing our membership, and this in today's world has become very vital, is through social online resources. And many of you are familiar with Facebook. There's also Twitter. I don't tweet much, but there is Twitter out there. There's a new thing called Tumble. I don't know if they mean we go in circles when we use it. Nonetheless, this is very effective, because I will tell you, two years ago we had only 5,000 fans on our Facebook page. Now we have 8,300. Last year, the Twitter account passed the 10,000 fans. 10,000 people were tweeting. So whatever they're doing, they love doing it, and it's very effective. Wait, wait, pour in water, pour in water. Okay. We have 32 Indiana AEW Facebook fans. Oh, and I will yeah, sign anybody up for a Facebook that account is, that needs it here great. today. That's great. So that then you can become a fan and learn more things about yeah. Facebook and, 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 and like easy. Indiana AEW, uh, AEW Facebook and Indiana Facebook. I will sign you up today. She's right there. Thank you. <laughs> in 2012, the AAUW blog had more than 220,000 views. And that is an informative blog, plus the fact it's, it's a lot of fun to read. I mean, it's very interesting. It's nicely done. Now, when I was a receivership specialist during one of my many careers, when I was trying to find myself, this was a very interesting career because what we did was we had to analyze the financial stability of companies that were in trouble and charities that were in trouble. And I remember, I, I'll never forget, there was this one charity, it was quite a large one, and they were sending monies, or so we thought, to orphans in third world countries, we thought. As it turned out, the money was staying in the pocket of the principals of that charity. You can be assured when you send your money, your fees, your donations into AUW, that money is safe. Two years in a row, our auditors have checked our books and said they look wonderful. The four top agencies that rate charities have given us awards every single year. The Huffington Post and Nerd Wallet. Again, I'm unfamiliar with Nerd Wallet, but it is, it is, it is something to be in Nerd Wallet because apparently they're concerned with where your money goes when you give it to charities. Have given us accolades. <coughs> We are very solid fiscally. Your money is always safe. Now, this is something that we were discussing last night a little bit. In 2012, the AUW Finance Department 
filed 990s for over 70% of the branches in the United States. This is something every branch must file with the IRS because you do not want to get into trouble with the IRS. So if you feel that, you know, well, why should I do it, I'll, I'll remember, you might not remember, AUW will do it for you at no cost as long as you have revenue of less than $50,000. So, if you have revenue of more than that, you could probably afford to hire an accountant. As we said before, we're always all concerned with attracting members. And we have found some things that we're doing very effective to draw our new members in. In 2008, we initiated, we don't have more on that, a free student affiliation, e-student affiliation. And we attracted 3,000 new e-students. That's a lot to attract. We're also, we're also, I'm getting dry, offering right now a renewal rate of $175, a flat rate. We used to charge different rates depending on the size of our CU partners. Now it's a flat rate. If you're a new CU partner, it's $125. These are all techniques to try to make it easier for people to join. And AUW has recently adopted a new affiliated, thank you, entity, the Younger Women's Task Force. This is very appealing to women in the 20s and 30s. This actually approaches them and issues the types of things they deal with every day. And it may not be the same things that we deal with at our age. So it's a wonderful way to attract people. Okay, we all know we have wonderful leaders right here in this room, and we know without leaders, we are nothing as, a, as an organization. But what do we do to try to attract leaders? There are a lot of leadership programs. Leadership Core was around, and it still is. They're, they're still reviving it and trying to think of different ways to make it stronger. In the meantime, there's a great new program. It's a mentoring program, and Sharon and I were speaking about this last night. This mentoring program is in its pilot stages. And I would tell you all to take a look at it on our website because what it will eventually do is it will bring together people that have a need to develop their skills to get more knowledge in a certain area with expert mentors. And those two parties will come together. And this will be a way to develop leaders. And it's now in a pilot program, so right now what they're doing is sending us emails for training. But look at it on the website. It's a very interesting program. MPP, that's our online dues payment program. If you don't do it, it's very convenient, it's very safe, it's very easy. I ask you to take a look at that also. Now probably, we are most renowned at this point for our research reports. The latest one to come out, graduating to a pay gap, as you can see up there, has told us that one year out of college, women only earn 82% of what men earn. It's beyond sad, okay, and the media has agreed with us on this. Because when this report came out, we got media attention from ABC, CBS, CNN, US News and World Report, we, the Washington Post, and many other media outlets. And most recently, it was covered in Glamour and Cosmopolitan Magazine, so they think it's even <laughs> that important they put it into those lovely magazines. If you want a copy of this report to use, you can get it through AUW. And we have executive summaries plenty to take back over there. And you can take that back, so they have it ready for you. This is very exciting. This is our new report that's coming out in May, Women in Community College. And I just saw something this morning. You might want to take a look at it. It was in the weekend uh, issue of the Wall Street Journal. They had a whole write-up about the difference in salaries from people getting a two-year degree with some four-year degrees, and apparently, if you get the right two-year degree, you'll make almost as much money as a four-year degree student. But the interesting thing about this is, is that 57% of students in community colleges are women. And if it wasn't for community colleges, they would not be able to get a college education. So this report is coming out next month. Look for it then. I don't have to tell you much about the Legal Advocacy Fund, because in your state, we've had or we have right now two cases. We have one, as we know, that Kathy is going to be speaking about that was settled. And we have one, LeBlanc versus the trustees of Indiana University, which is a new case that we're adopting. Last year, AUW gave $100,000 
to help women protect their rights. It's an amazing thing to see when you know that without those funds, these women would never be able to do anything about the injustices that they go through. I don't have to say any more about that because Kathy's going to tell us a wonderful story after I was hearing some of it before. Fellowships and grants. This is something you should be tremendously proud of. We give four, $4 million three hundred thousand dollars last year in fellowships and grants. We give more money in fellowships and grants to women exclusively than any other organization. That's something to really brag about. Right. That is really amazing. Now, we have a couple of new things in that area that I want to tell you about, because these are brand new. We also reinstated the International Project Grant Program. This program awards alumni of our international fellowship programs to apply for grants to implement home country community-based programs. That's a great thing for them able to go back there and still apply for grants to help them when they're back home. We've renewed the AAUW Achievement Award. This award goes to women at the pinnacle of their careers. Gloria Steinem has been one of those people that's received an award, Marilyn Albright, and uh, astronaut Mae Jemison. We're giving another award out this summer in June at the convention. And the board approved a new alumni recognition award for an outstanding alumna. And that one will be presented again at the convention this summer. We're going to be giving a lot of awards out at the convention. International initiatives. Look at all the things that were involved in internationally. We don't speak much about this, but it's going on all the time. And I will tell you something that we just partnered with, and that was the Clinton Global Initiative. It's up there, isn't it? Yes. In 2005, former President Bill Clinton, okay, started this initiative. And what it does is it convenes global leaders to create an into in, in, to create and implement innovative programs to try to resolve some of the world's greatest problems. They get together and they try to work together instead of fight each other. This is a great, great initiative. But what's even better about it is, last month at Washington University they put the second part of this together, and that's the Clinton Global Initiative University, where they took 1,000 students came to Wash U in St. Louis. I wasn't even invited, I was very sad about that. But they had 1,000 students, and they came, and they worked for the entire weekend with these different great leaders trying to give their input and get ideas how they could be of use. It's a wonderful, wonderful partnership. Nick Whistle, congratulations. Two people from this state. I, you have to give yourself a hand. It is wonderful. <laughs> Nick Whistle, this year we have more numbers of students than ever, 600, okay? And what's also exciting about it is that at the graduate student fair at Nick Whistle, we'll have 50 schools coming to recruit these students. And some of these schools are John Hopkins, Carnegie Mellon, MIT, and some of the military academies. So it's going to be a great opportunity for these girls. This is my area of public policy. OK, you did a fantastic job. This, this get out the vote. It's my vote. I will be heard. You were heard. Your voices were heard. And you can see by some of the things that have happened in public policy. What's next? The CU State Track. Um, Bob, have you gotten your training yet with no, that? I have not. Had OK. That, Nancy will. Nancy will. Okay, it's an incredible program. You know how we get these alerts about national yeah. issues all the time. Okay, well we care, but we care about what's happening in our own state. And what this will do is it will help you to be able to see an issue, see what happens to it, if it becomes a bill, okay, if it doesn't, and you'll be able to follow it step by step. They're, they're already in the process mm -hmm. of sending that. It's going to be wonderful, okay, because I've seen it take place in other states. It's a great thing. You, you will love it. There's something else I want to mention in here because it's not in this slide. It's something new. It'll be on the website next week. And Bob was speaking briefly about the public policy platform. You know, this gun control issue has become hot and furious. Our public policy platform speaks of gun violence, not gun control. And we give an explanation of why that is. It'll be out on the website next week. Read it. But they're looking now for your input. So in 2014, when we change this policy again, we have to know what the members think. So, so look at it and start to send things in. 
this is going to be the best thing for you. And it's back here. Okay. Uh, national STEM programs are growing, but the most important thing about this for you, and this is something that I want every branch person here to think about, is Tech Savvy. That was started in Buffalo, New York by Tamara Brown. It's a, Tech Savvy is a one-day program okay, for sixth graders to ninth grader girls and their parents. What they do is they have hand-on activities in STEM areas. These girls will learn everything they can possibly learn. The parents simultaneously will be learning about the careers their daughters could possibly have, and they'll learn how to finance those careers. It's been very successful, but the exciting part for you in Indiana <coughs> is that your state, and I'm going to read this, has a special opportunity to host this program with funding from not just AUW, but from Prax Air Foundation, who has a big corporate presence here, and they actually said they want to give you money, okay? So they, they told us, they came in, and I got a special release on this. They said, we want AUW Indiana to apply for this grant. I think it's roughly $8,000. And the applications went online April 15th. Now, Anna, Anna Kay is what we call her. She's got a very hard last name. All you need to do is call Connect and ask to speak to Anna Kay. She will walk you through the process to get this grant. And this grant is something that people, this foundation, Praxair, wants you to have, okay? So it's a great program. Please call Anna Kay and see how you can walk through. Yes? I uh, wanted to let you all know, if you didn't, one of our national members, Cindy Felston, at uh, IUPU Columbus, is following up on this. She's been in contact with That's NSK fabulous. and with AEW. Okay. We have a write-up on our table display because she's hoping to put on a program in Columbus with this, uh, apply for this Praxair grant. And she's asked Indianapolis to be the fiscal agent branch because Fantastic. she doesn't have a branch. So uh, look at the, and if you want to contact her and learn from her or be on her committee with this one, uh, it has her contact information. Dan Hirschberger from Goshen. Um, I have also made contact with Anna Kay, and she told me that Indianapolis <coughs> and Valparaiso <coughs> and Goshen, she didn't mention Columbus at that time. Columbus uh, doesn't have a branch. Indianapolis is the branch. Oh, you're Columbus. Indianapolis. Uh -huh. okay. And uh, she said that she would be getting in touch with us later next month to have a conference call to work out details of how we can each have Good. And possibly collaborate. Yeah, you want to stay on top of it though, because April 15th it opened to other places too. So you want to make sure because the corporation that Praxair really wants to work with you here. Yes. Hi, Charlotte Pine of South End Branch. Uh, I just want to encourage AEW to focus on STEAM. It says STEM. The new thing is STEAM. A for arts. It focuses on women. So just think about that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, our slides here, I'm going to try to speed this up a bit because I know we have a little time. Uh, what does Alabama, they ask Florida, Louisiana, and Connecticut have in common? Okay, They have in common, they're promoting state-level student advisory councils. What this is, is that AUW takes 10 girls from different states, brings them to Washington, D.C. for a leadership retreat with the hopes that they will then go back to their college campuses and spread our mission. It's a wonderful program, and again, we encourage you to get involved in it. I know that you're already involved here with the Campus Action Projects Grant, but we want to remind you again, this is the program that gets teams of faculty and students to put into action what is in our research reports. You get $5,000 for that grant to see that happen, and it's a wonderful opportunity to continue what you've already started here in Indiana because you've already been doing this. How many of you out there have daughters? How many have daughters? <coughs> okay, I was shocked, dismayed, and horrified being a feminist when my daughter got her first job, and she just came home and told me the salary, and I asked her, did you even negotiate it? She goes, I, uh, uh, they won't give me the job then. I said, no, that's not true. Start Smart is a great program. Right now, you know, there's still talk out there that, well, people don't put me to work when I get trained. Depends on your universities you're working with. You could become a trained facilitator. I took the training. It's very simple, very easy. You have two. You have two. That, then you know they're right both here. here. 
oh, God bless you people. See, I don't have these things in front of me. I come cold, not knowing. Then you know that this is such a gift, and I will just not preach to the choir, but I will tell you, they asked participants of one of these workshops, okay, before they came, how much they knew about negotiation. 12% knew. After they took the workshop, 36% said they developed that skill in order to negotiate. And our girls really need that skill. Sandy, one comment though, before everyone does that, there is a $500 fee that goes not to AAUW, but to the wage people. Yeah, so let me speak about that for problem. a minute. Yeah, let me speak to that. There, that is a problem, and all I can say right now is, this is so, when I say these things, it's so cryptic. We are working on that. We are working on that, because there's been a lot of commentary on that. Mm -hmm. And we have plans on doing some changes, but it's unfortunate that right now, you know, we don't want anything held up, because this is a, such an important thing for girls. I mean, men don't hesitate, but girls do when they go out. I have one little success story for AW Indiana. Some of you know my daughter, oldest daughter Andrea, who's a AW member and was serving on the board. And her work and family commitment said, I've got to take a respite time. She just took on a new job this past month and negotiated her salary. There you go. There you go. There you go. And ended up with $4,000 more there you go. than she would have had if she accepted the initial offer. I think it's just So amazing. you can train your daughters and granddaughters. <laughs> yes, you can. Okay, looking at the left here, campus women win. What's important about this is that we're the only, the only national program, okay, that encourages and trains college women to run for student government. We're the only one. Nobody else does it. So we should really promote this because it's unique. <coughs> AUW archives, when you think of the word archives, you think of sneezing, dust, a dusty library. You don't have to do that anymore if you want to see our past. You can now, as of February, go online and look at the newly designed and updated online museum. It's tremendously interesting. As we said before, we have impact internationally. And all I'm going to say about this is we awarded international fellowships to 41 women from around the world. Coming to the end, because I know I'm running out of time, the most important thing here, I think, in Indiana is what is the impact of AEW in Indiana? Last year, there were three fellowships and grant recipients in Indiana that I know of, according to my notes. There may have been more, because they, they don't seem to be right all the time. There were three Indiana members who served on those fellowship and grant committees. College students received this Campus Action Project grant and college women at St. Mary's were trained on how to negotiate their salaries. And I'm going to close with this last statement. None of this could be possible, none of it, without all of you. None of it, okay? We couldn't do any of the work, raise any of our funds. I want to particularly thank A. Indiana's treasured AW legacy members, Ella Bettinger, I hope I'm saying that correctly, and Phyllis Thompson. I hope you were all clap for them. <laughs> One last word, my cards are there. Take me seriously, I answer emails. Okay, so I'm there to help you any way that you need help. Thank you so much.